Describing motion. Introduction. The most obvious phenomenon in nature is motion. A boy walking along a road. A man running a race. A boy driving a car. A speeding truck. Moving dogs. A flying bird. A football rolling on the ground. A ball falling from a height are all few examples of things showing motion. Rest and motion. A body is said to be at rest or in a state of rest when it does not change its position with respect to its surrounding objects. In other words, if the position of a body does not change with respect to any fixed point in its surroundings, it is at rest or in a state of rest. The state of motion depends on the position of the observer. Any object can be considered at rest or in motion relative to some fixed reference point. The states of rest and motion are relative. Imagine that you are travelling in a moving train. There are many other passengers in your compartment. Is there any change in your position with respect to another passenger sitting by your side even though you are moving with the train? Look at the nearby trees, lampposts, houses, people and animals outside. It looks as if the trees, houses and lampposts are passing by you at a great speed. But houses and trees do not move. It is actually you who is moving with the moving train. Types of motion Everything in the physical world is in motion, from the elementary particles within atoms to the largest galaxies of stars. These motions can be translatory, rotational or vibrational motion as shown in the following animation. Translatory motion Translatory motion is that in which all the particles of a body move through the same distance in the same time. When a body moves along a straight line, it is called rectilinear motion. When a body moves along a curved line, it is called curvilinear motion. Rotatory motion Rotatory motion is that in which a body moves about a fixed axis without changing its position. Examples are windmill, fan, spinning wheel, etc. Oscillatory motion Oscillatory motion is that in which a body moves to and fro about its mean position. The motion of a swing and the pendulum of a clock show oscillatory motion. The leaves and branches of the plant also show to and fro movement under the influence of the wind. Oscillatory motion activity. Take a stone and suspend it from a stand by means of a thread. Allow the stone to become stationary. Now, give it a gentle push. What do you notice? The stone moves to and fro about its mean position or rest at position. To start with, the stone was at rest at the mean point, A. It swings and moves from A to B on the right, comes back to A, moves from A to C on the left and again comes back to A. The stone has completed one oscillation. Such a motion is called oscillatory motion. An oscillation may be large or small, but the time of one oscillation remains the same. This time is called time period. Periodic motion Periodic motion is that which repeats itself after regular intervals of time. The motion of the earth around the sun. The motion of a clock pendulum. Heartbeat. Pulse movement are a few examples of periodic motion. Non-periodic motion. In case of a non-periodic motion, the motion does not repeat itself after regular intervals of time. Examples of non-periodic motion are blinking of eyes, occurrence of earthquakes, playing a football on the ground, moving a car on the road and occurrence of a landslide. Repetitive motion. Movement of lips while speaking, flickering of eyelids, the fingers of a person playing a guitar, violin or harmonium are some examples of repetitive motion. All periodic motions are repetition but 
all repetitive motions are not periodic. Measurements The units of measurements are length, area, volume, mass, time and temperature. To make your judgment more reliable and accurate, the actual measurements are taken. To measure length, you may use a footstep, arm length, that is cubit, or hand span, etc. Here, the length of each of these items is a unit of measurement. These conventional methods employed for the measurement of length are of course not satisfactory because the length of the arm, foot and hand span varies from person to person. So, these cannot be used as a common unit of measurement. Likewise, for measuring milk, you cannot use a spoon or a tumbler as a unit. Standard Unit The unit which is acceptable to the majority of the people as a basic unit of measurement is called a standard unit for that group of people. This set of units is called International System of Unit and is famous as SI unit. According to this system, standard units for measurements of basic quantity which we come across in mechanics are given below. The standard unit of length is meter. The standard unit of mass is kilogram. The standard unit of time is seconds. The standard unit of temperature is Kelvin. Multiple and submultiple unit. Multiple and submultiple units are used for the measurement of larger and smaller quantities respectively. To measure large distances, the meter is considered as a very small unit. The word kilo stands for 1000. Thus, one kilometer stands for 1000 meters. A kilometer is a multiple of a meter. One kilometer is equal to 1000 meters or one km is equal to 1000 m. For measuring small objects, meter is two bigger unit. The length of a pencil is 0.15 meter. It is more convenient to write it as 15 centimeters. The word centi means one by hundredth part. 100 centimeters is equal to 1000 meters or 100 cm is equal to 1000 m. Lengths are even smaller than a centimeter. For example, Thickness of a coin can be expressed as a millimetre which means one by one thousandth part of a metre. One thousand millimetres is equal to one metre or one thousand mm is equal to one m. To express the size of a molecule, atom, proton, electron, etc., the most commonly used units of length are micron and angstrom. 1 micron is equal to 10 to the power of minus 6 m. 1 angstrom is equal to 10 to the power of minus 10 m. Measurement of length. Meter is used as a standard unit for measuring length, which is written as m in short form. Meter is the length at zero between two marks on a metal bar made of platinum iridium kept at the bureau of weights and measures at Paris. Various types of measuring devices such as a ruler, a meter rod, a measuring tape, etc. are used by different people for different purposes to measure length. Measuring length accurately with a meter rod. In our day-to-day -day work, we use a wooden meter rod to measure lengths. It is marked or graduated in centimeters and millimeters. Suppose we are asked to measure the length of a block, we take a meter scale. The zero mark on the scale is made to coincide with one end of the block and reading coincide with the other end of the block is taken. Since a meter scale has some thickness, we may make an error if the eye is not correctly positioned. The correct position of the eye, B, is vertically above the end where the reading is to be taken. For a more accurate measurement, the scale should be placed edgewise as shown in figure. Measuring small thicknesses. If you are asked to measure the thickness of a coin or of a playing card or of a page of your book, you cannot use a meter scale directly. Now, let us measure the thickness of a page of your notebook. Count about 300 pages of your notebook. With the help of a measuring scale, measure the total thickness of these pages. Divide the thickness 
by the total number of pages. The result gives the thickness of one page of your notebook. Let us measure the thickness of a 50 paisa coin. Take about 20 50 paisa coins and place them one upon another, as shown in the figure. Measure the total thickness with a meter scale and then divide the number of coins to get the thickness of one coin. Proper use of instruments. Take the following precautions while using various instruments for measuring length. The scale should be placed along the lengths to be measured. Your eye must be in front of and in line where the measurement is to be taken as shown. Ensure that ends of the scale are not worn out. Measure the length of an object using different positions of the scale and then take the average of these me measuring diameter of a spherical object. Measure the diameter of a ball by using a pair of blocks. Place a ball on the table. Bring two wooden blocks such that both of these touch the ball and their lower edges are along a meter scale as shown in figure. Measure the distance between the faces of the block touching the ball. Measurement of length using a measuring tape. Measuring tape is most commonly used for measuring length of objects. It is a long graduated strip of flexible plastic or rubber or that of an alloy as in figure. It has a zero mark at one of its ends and divisions are marked in centimeters and inches along its length. When we are asked to measure the length of a block using a measuring tape, then zero, that is the zero mark on the tape, is made to coincide with one end of the block and the reading coincide with the other end of the block is taken. In order to measure the length of the block more accurately, its length is measured along positions of the tape instead of the zero mark, any other mark, say 2 or 5, and then the average of these measurements is taken. The reading so obtained gives the required length of the object.